Shopify exists to basically arm the rebels. Like we want lots of people to go and uh, compete with Amazon. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's really good for the internet. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Toby, how's it going, man? I'm reaching across. Hey. Oh, no better handshake. Yeah, I'm. I'm there we go. Appreciate you making it, man. Um, for those who don't know, Toby is the co-founder of Shopify. Um, dude, I'm going to ask you the hard, hard hitting questions. It's, it's Let's not, do it. If, okay. Was it, does it feel different being a billionaire? <sighs> you know what I mean? Cause everybody thinks I got to get this place and then I'll be happy or successful. How does it feel? Um, so, um, uh, I can now talk with, uh, great confidence about this. Um, the day I became a billionaire, um, the clouds did not part. The no. trumpets didn't trumpet, I guess. Uh, nothing, nothing's different. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's an incredible source of energy. Um, like you can, people mostly have energy in form of their time. They mm -hmm. can invest it into the things that are interesting and the things that might be, um, uh, profitable for them in any, in any which way. Money is the same thing at, Time is way higher leverage. Um, um, money is also a form of en energy. And so you, you get to do a couple of things more at the same time. That's, that's good. But um, I've never set out to become rich. In fact, uh, I have very cheap hobbies. As long as I have a gaming PC, you have <laughs> a good laptop to do, do my work on, that's, that's, that's all, all I really need. And so not, nothing changed really. So one fun fact, Toby, um, I started off as a developer and learned Ruby and Rails and you built Active Merchant was, was the way we, we transacted and did payments back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I know that uh, you still are very involved in the product team and, and the, you know, the, the engineering, um, and that's what I think a lot of people when they look at Shopify, I know I look at just like how incredible you guys and, and how consistent and all that stuff. W what do you think is different about the way you think about engineering, technical, you know, product? What is it that's allowed you to build world-class product? Yeah, I don't, that's, that's a good question. I, I, um, I don't know, I don't know necessarily if, if um, I do anything terribly different from what most people do. Um, I mean, w w for one thing is um, I am, uh, programming is something that's really, really important to me. I, I, I love it, I'm a technologist, I'm, but I'm not a traditionally uh, trained engineer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm- Self-taught. I, uh, I, I, I self-taught um, and um, um, I follow my interests fairly wide, like yeah. I find businesses super interesting. Yeah. I find finances interesting. I, and in fact, I find everything. Like I've actually have not really found anything that I don't find terror. Is really, it the really problem interesting. that you? It's, it's exactly because like, um, like I just have questions <laughs> about, about the world in a way. And then I like exploring those questions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that involves reading a book and then now you know the thing that you want to know. But in particular case of, 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 of Shopify, it required building a company to a certain degree because the thing that I found is initially, and that's what I used Ruby for, right? I, um, I built this snowboard store and the thing I found and what I had been a question about is like, why is it so goddamn hard to right. build an internet company? Yeah. Like, isn't this the thing that we, like didn't we invent the internet so everyone can kind of do their own thing on it? Like, isn't, isn't, wasn't the cool thing about it when it came around that suddenly you didn't, you, you, you could participate? There's suddenly no, there was no permission required. You could put a bit of yourself yeah. onto a website and, and everyone without needing permission could, could visit it. That was sort of a premise. And then I wanted to do this in the form of uh, building a business, mm -hmm. which is, I think, to me, is one of the most pure forms of self-expression. And it turned out to be incredibly difficult because no one has deemed to make it easy. And first of all, I wanted to know why not. Um, and then second, you know, what would happen if someone would do it? Would there be a lot more people who are going to be entrepreneurs? Or would there be a lot more people who um, do this kind of thing? And so, you know, I follow, I, I, like, I follow these um, these questions, um, um, and um, I, I think uh, I, I, it's very natural for me to just say, okay, well, now that I, 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 I'm, I'm on this journey exploring this question, it would be good to understand 
I mean, how do you fundraise? <laughs> like, or yeah. how to organize and, uh, like business and the systems. And um, so I, I, I guess one thing, one advantage I have um, uh, is that uh, I, I, I never really went into this because I wanted to play with that one technology. Yeah. Or, or um, I would never describe myself, um, like I, I describe myself as a technologist, I guess, or a product technologist, I don't, like, I, but never as a like mobile developer or something, yeah. because that seems incredibly confined. Yeah. To me, that, like the point is, um, like to me, there's, like, I have so much pride in being a generalist. And um, uh, because I can, uh, draw upon like all Wide these different arrow. fields yeah. to 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 come to solutions, and I think that maybe that's something that helped along the journey. And what about being productive at that? Because like you can, you know, there's a lot of people that'll study broad, but they don't actually apply it. Right. Um, how do you think? Because because I'm fascinated. Like, have you ever had your IQ tested? Like, do you th like? Because I self-taught programming as well, but I didn't. I don't feel like I approach problems the way you have, and I'm just curious. Like, you know, is it you want to look at the broad spectrum of different things that need to be solved as problems. And then you have a ranking order, like a thought process for prioritization. Cause mm -hmm. because you're so broad, like where, how do you decide where you're going to go spend your time and energy and what problems? Yeah. So I've, for the past 15 years, I've been just completely obsessed with exactly this question about how to build software that makes it easier for people who aren't techni uh, technologists to, uh, to, to, to start in head companies. It's just yeah. been all consuming. That's the question. It, Shopify is almost a sort of a collaborative inquiry into this totally. question, right? Like, like a recursive question on just right. how do we make it easier for non-technologists to build an online company? What would the world look like if entrepreneurship would be easy, easy and common, right? Mm. And and so um, with that question, my hypothesis would be that it's a cooler version of a world that exists right now, for if sure. that would be the case, because I think, again, I, I really believe in the self-expression of starting business. It's very, it's, it's very pure and very important. And um, so the way to get to an answer is just make it so, like create that thing, make, like try um, in our defined area, which is right now physical shippable products, um, make, it, make that so easy to start businesses that there will be a lot more consumption. And so here's the interesting thing. Um, I've been, uh, we, we met around, like I, I, I remember us meeting on a trip, um, just pro I might have been the same day I was in Santa Road, like we were in San Francisco, I was in Santa Road pitching, right, uh, of venture capitalists. This is about 10 years ago? Yeah, like 2008, nine, yeah. something like this. And um, I was with uh, uh, some VCs, um, and uh, they were seriously looking at a company, but ended up not investing. And the reason they gave me is because um, they thought the addressable market was too small um, for online stores mm. um, because of their, uh, like they, they, they said at this point there was about uh, 40, 50,000 online stores. And yeah. so if you would get 50% of that, that would still not be a big yeah. enough business. And I actually met with a partner, uh, same partner recently, a couple of years ago. And he asked me like, what did you miss there? Um, <laughs> And I, I pointed out saying, <laughs> no, you, guy. You, you had it right. Like you, you're actually correct. What you didn't yeah. realize is Shopify was the solution to the very problem like, that you identified that there was only, the reason why there was only 40,000 so online stores is because it was hard, expensive, and uh, everyone who tried ran into all these brick walls of complexity, which then Shopify once after another smoothed over and made, made, made it simple to do. And so, um, you know, doing that and keeping to do that is just fascinating to me. And so, um, Everything's interesting that helps me somehow take this question further. There. So it's back then you were here. This is the, the Nirvana. Yeah. There's bumps along the way. And you just said, okay, well, this first hurdle needs to be yeah. smoothened out. And that was whatever it was back then. And that's still the question you ask yourself on a daily basis yeah. to continue building this business. Yeah, what sucks about starting online businesses? Um, mm. And the answer to that is... The next thing that we should be working on, and if we, if if if, we, if we're not working on that, we probably don't get the uh, prioritization right. Yeah. Um, which is also interestingly, um, it's a cure for something that befalls, you know, a lot of businesses that are sort of getting successful in their initial product market fit, mm -hmm. but then don't end up becoming maybe as big as the ambition of the founders might be. Yeah. Because what what happens a lot is that companies end up adhering fail to 
predefined industry swim lanes. Like for instance, um, Shopify in the beginning was shopping cart software. That was an existing market. There's open source software, or was enterprise software, mid yeah. like ton, like hundreds, yeah. apparently thousands. Some people told me, yeah, um, uh, uh, of companies. Although um, with a twist that they all try to service the same um, entry point, yeah. which was existing retailers. Yeah, not it's like checkout software. Yeah, like yeah, shopping not, cart, not new businesses because yeah. existing customers had a lot of money. Like mm -hmm. existing retailers had a lot of money. Yeah. Entrepreneurs had no money, so everyone went there. Um, so uh, Shopify launched into a very crowded space with one major change. We actually making it for the entrepreneurs, and it turns out um, like if, I, if I look at the top ten um, la fastest selling stores on Shopify now, uh, the vast majority of them are people who started on Shopify. So wow, it was they didn't a, migrate. No, no, they didn't yeah. come. They, they're not the Procter and Gambles or something, which we have as customers too. But these guys sell faster. So um, the uh, so that's that, that ended up being important. But then this continued, hey, let's go and, 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 and think about what the pain points are, um, uh, has taken us to be in, in a completely different segment. Like um, one of the pain points was a lot of our cu customers ended up um, having physical locations and, and they were spending a lot of their money uh, with integrators trying to synchronize the point of sale data bias with, uh, with, with the Shopify database. And we said, that's silly. We can, let's just connect the same thing to, together and, and we build a point of sale uh, system. Suddenly we were not Shopify, uh, like not uh, shopping cart software anymore. Suddenly we were um, multi-channel software. Yeah. Um, and then Facebook came up and Instagram and all these kind of other channels. And we just built, we, we just changed Shopify to like, you Solve give us your products, products, you sell everywhere. Yeah. That's a completely different category of software, which no one ended up following us. Uh, like into now we now we are getting into uh, logistics. We we we, we have yeah, warehouses. We we we, we, yeah. we we have a robotics arm and all these kind of things. So um, again, that is not adherence to the swim lanes of a predefined industry. That is just following a question as far as it goes. And I think that's really really important to build a company that is sort of has a self confidence of a mission um, uh, or a question it, it, it's trying to answer. Um, because otherwise, I think you self-confine yourself to some That's kind of really local lame. maxima. Do you think about the idea of the machine that builds the machine? Like, how? Because yeah. you know, I know early days, you guys invested in an executive coach to like coach up your leadership teams, which was a novel idea. Um, do you think about like the yeah. organization that builds Shopify and how? Sure, it's it's. The funny thing is, I, I, one thing I found is that um, you know the advantages of starting out as a programmer is that you you automatically you think in systems, right? You don't no no good programmer is confused that the world runs on cause and effect. You know, people like by default most people think about cause and effect, right? Like it's like you do this and then that happens. Like you go to school and then you get a good job. <laughs> you 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 do this one thing and you get a promotion. Like everything sort of happens as linear. Yeah. The world doesn't work at all like this. That's a sh complete post-rationalization by our brain. But the world actually works on systems. It's you go to a good school because that activates your quality of thinking. You learn how to like learn things. This reinforces the value of which, like your value to an organization. And that is the thing that over time will end up being attractive to a company, and then you end up a company, and then you solve problems, and you get better decision making. It's all loopy. The world is loopy, not linear. And so, um, uh, as an engine, as an engineer, as a programmer, you understand this because you you have been building systems. You know that things have to uh, connect not in linear ways; they have to reinforce each other. Otherwise, everything breaks. After one thing breaks, and so um, the good news is. Um, we know this in engineering, but most of the world doesn't know this in company building yet. Um, it's actually, these ideas are the new ideas in yep. the world of company building. And so um, once you say, okay, well, let's build a culture where the right things matter, um, where the, all the systems sort of intuitively reinforce each other in such a way that you get the, like, the kinds of behaviors that you want, the kinds of systems, like, um, uh, the right people get the promotions and all these kind of, just like where all this kind of fits together. It's 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 an it's an interesting challenge. Mm, um, there's and it's people very, very worth doing. Yeah. Um, which is true. Turns out one of the nice things about machines is 
They you just do the same thing. And you tell them history un- until time. they crash. That's what I always loved about coding <laughs> was I solve this problem this way, and it'll always do that for the history of life. Conversely, though, um, uh, the program also doesn't make itself better. Mm-hmm. If because um, uh, the the most wonderful thing like about about businesses is um, you know what is a business like th- this is such an interesting question um, I think the the sort of intuitively think about a business like we talk about Apple did this or Google did this but there is no such thing I, it was a um, was a like, there's no monolithic Google Google does not make decisions there's 150,000 people or so at Google. Um, same, same in shop, Shopify. No, Shopify is about uh, 5,000 or whatever people. Um, uh, so how does Shopify get better? Because we have to, right? Like the Shopify of um, 2012 couldn't solve the Shopify 2020 mm-hmm. challenges. Um, how does a company get better? It's not by just getting more people. It's, uh, that, that wouldn't lead to like exponential growth. Um, that would lead to linear growth. Um, you need more good people, but the existing people also have to get better. Mm-hmm. You have to requalify for your job every year. Mm-hmm. And so how do you do that? Well, um, a lot of this is culture. Um, a lot of this is um, systems. Like One thing we, which is so good about uh, like our specific story of, of, of having built Shopify in not Silicon Valley, basically. Like, not, not, not nothing bad about Silicon Valley. It's just very different to build companies there. Totally. Um, the, um, uh, for instance, um, when I hire someone, they're probably going to still work there 10 years later yeah. if, if, if a relationship is good, right? Um, um, so uh, because of that, we built a lot, like this, this sort of learner's organization best. is such a, yeah. core part of our business, of our, of our identity. And this is why we have like a f- fairly sizable coaching staff in the company. How big is it now? I, I mean, think talent acceleration is 30, 40, 50. Yeah. It's big. It's, it's a quite big team. You and call it talent? Talent acceleration. Acceleration. Because, and this is my point, what is a company? A company is a collection of people. Yeah. The best thing you can, like, if you want to become better as a company. Build your people help your people have their breakthroughs. It's the way Shopify became a better company, it gets a better company today, is by someone somewhere having a eureka moment of some meaningful way, Mm -hmm. right? Like this is how a team actually gets better. And because of that, um, it's not just that they are now thinking better and not, not just they made this one choice better, they are, that person will make every choice they encounter better. And there's how many, you know, billions of choices happen in a in a in, in a calendar year, right? Like it's um, uh, just so you if you if you figure out ways, systems, reinforcing loops, whatever you call them, to um, always ratchet up the quality of the thinking, the quality of the decision making within the company year over year. Um, and you do that over a consistent way, eventually it'll become unbeatable because that's not it's what inevitable. most companies do. I like the way you said you have to reapply or requ- requalify every year for your job. So that's just part of that loop, that engine. I think that that's the, that is something that people at Shopify talk about. It's like, am I, like you, you have, like in a company that's growing significantly 50% in a year or something like this. At your scale is, re- I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, um, but that also means everyone has to get 50% better at that job just to stand still. Just to stay, yeah. So um, if you want to grow and you want to get make it further, you have to outpace the growth of a company. And that's that's, t- that's tough. It's, it's tough to do. You have to be really committed. Like... Um, being a learner's organization, thriving on change, these are, these are core values in a company, um, making great decisions quickly, uh, think of a long term. Like all these things are kind of, they, they are sort of like um, warning labels on, the, on, 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 on a cigarette pack. <laughs> like not saying Shopify is as bad as nicotine for you, but it is a choice that you're making and you, like you it's a warning label. For. It's, it's like this place might not be for, for, for everyone, um, but for the people it's for, it's, it's intoxicating. 
let's talk about Harley because I know you know Harley's the glue uh, for a lot of people. Um, how how you know because he wasn't the early. I remember Scott met the early co-founders, and then Harley yeah. shows up, and yeah. he's he's a meaningful part of the business today. Yes. How did you guys connect? <laughs> How, like, I mean, in many ways, a lot of people think he runs the business, like yep. in his area. How, how did how did this all come to be? I'm curious. So Harley, I met Harley um, at an entrepreneur meetup in, I want to say, like 2007, 8, okay. maybe even earlier than that. Um, he was studying, he was, he, he got Is his he law lawyer? degree. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was doing his uh, law degree in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, he, he's been very, he's from a very entrepreneurial family. Um, he, he was looking for, like he, he was looking for entrepreneurial opportunities. Uh, I think he was selling licensed t-shirts to go back to universities. He had something going on. So, so he was at an entrepreneur meetup and I was as well. And um, uh, I, I told him about Shopify and he, he, he loved the idea of being able to, you know, instead of just having to like, negotiate with her universities actually just find a different market and I told him a snowboard story and he ended up like he after the meetup he he so signed up the product yeah yeah he started using product and he was building uh, a store doing law class as he tells it and um, uh, I think that I mean that was a successful thing for him he had lots of uh, yeah, he, he encountered money. a lot of things he, yeah. he made he made money he had lots of feedback and um, frankly um, he sent me more emails than any other person ever. <laughs> just <laughs> like, enthusiastic. Absolutely in enthusiastic, but also relentless. Yeah. Like ev ev every single time he had a shipment um, that was late, like for some inventory, yeah. uh, he couldn't sell this. Like he wanted me to uh, prorate like the monthly fee for Shopify because he's like, oh, I can't sell anything. I don't have anything. I can't pay and I don't want to shut down the store. So just uh, comp me the store for the next 10 days. And I'm like, you know, like my billing system couldn't even do this, right? Like because, so I had the choice, like, I, I had this like super squeak, squeaky wheel of Harley over here. Um, and I'm like, am I gonna invest? Like, because it was basically like me and like four other people working on the engineering of Shopify. And I was trying to make decisions. Should I add stuff like this? Is, is that is that kind of for real? Is that what everyone will ask me for eventually? Um, should I add this to my billing system as a feature? Um, and I decided like, that's crazy. So so. You know, and in the end, I just made his account free because I just didn't want to deal with all these kind of like changes Getting anymore. Ass, yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. ended up being more, more more trouble than it was worth. I didn't know that. And so um, uh, he was done with his um, law degree. Uh, he went articling in Toronto. And um, one interesting thing happened. I had this uh, angel investor, John Phillips, in the company. He mm -hmm. he put some money in uh, early. John Phillips Green? No, no, John, oh, not John Phillips Green. Okay. It's a different John Phillips. Um, uh, um, and he, uh, he, he was a great mentor for me in the transition of becoming the CEO, not just, uh, because I started as CTO in a company. And, um, uh, one day he, he said after a board meeting, um, he said, he said, uh, Toby, I really, really love the com your company you're building, but, um, everyone I'm meeting in this company is basically of some version of you. Um, um. Basically, engineers or uh, like engineering hacker type kind of people. Yeah. And he said, "One, you really have to have to figure out how to hire people who are different from you." And so um, that was good feedback, really good feedback. Um, and uh, I was thinking about, okay, you know, like how do, where we go, and 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 I ended up starting to talk to people who are just obviously had different skill sets. And Harley was one of the first people who came to mind. Like we were thinking, you know, like. That guy was such a pain in the behind, like when, when I was negotiating, like on, the, like he could be my pain in the behind. Yeah, he could be your guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But better to have someone like him on my yeah, side. On my side yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I, I called him and said, hey, what are you doing? And he said, basically said, I'm, I'm articling, but like, screw this, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm going to do something different. Yeah. It's like, well, how about you come for so in the first? you actually were looking to r recruit him. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I always thought him. he was like, "Oh shit, there's this like lightning in a bottle. I better jump on the." I, I, he might have realized this, but like, I think I, 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 I probably. Sorry, I ended up calling him before he could call me. Okay. Uh, it was like we were both ready because like he wanted to finish his articling and then come back and 
so 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 that happened. I, I same day I actually hired Toby Shen, where I'm not sure you know, but like he's also like completely different person. Um, both of them started on the same and day, different than you as well. Completely different from me, Perfect. completely different from Harley. Yeah. And between between us, I think like the like a trifecta. It, yeah, and it, it was like suddenly this sort of concept of culture fit changed. You know, because culture fit before was, hey, you probably played video games and FIFA soccer. You, 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 um, um, I mean, we had lots of genders and like people, ethnicities in the companies in Canada. Like it's, yeah, it's you it's get people from everywhere. Yeah. Um, but everyone was still, their sort of values, life values Venn diagram was a massive overlap. Yeah. And then these two guys came just massively broadening the area of, um, the kinds of people that that would thrive at Shopify, and that was a really important signal. And the next people, we, like suddenly, we got all these amazing people, which maybe without this particular day of hiring, uh, we wouldn't have brought on. And I think that was a major su uh, part of a uh, success. Really? So Holly ended up like doing. I mean, he started out just basically renegotiating right? every deal, yeah. and uh, you know, just instantly useful to 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 to, to everything. And and funnily enough. Um, in, 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 a, in a very real way, actually, the company grew into Harley, <laughs> like because his natural skills of like being out there, yeah. his relentlessness, uh, but also um, like basically, here's the first thing Harley had, uh, did after he came. It's like he came into the office and said, "I just walked by this place two times uh, because there was no sign out there." I'm like, obviously not. We have what? What do we need a sign? We don't have. Yeah, we're the uh, internet. We have yeah. internet. Yeah. Like, uh, we have signs on Jobify.com. That's yeah. that's. It. And he says, no, 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 like let's put signs up. And, and just like he wanted to, like he wanted to be louder. Was right? it and, was it his ambition that was bigger than the business, or it was just louder? I, I, I think he's just extroverted in a, in a way that oh, just I'm a not. bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a bit. Yeah, right. I would and, say on the extreme side. That's. But but it's a, it gives you a. Fl uh, sort of a flavor of the kinds of conversations that I had, which no one else would have brought up. And so bit by bit, it made the company a lot more self-confident in what it is. Mm. Um, again, it allowed another complete group of people to, to uh, suddenly find themselves to be a fit for the company um, because they could self-identify. Hey, like, I'm uh, Maybe I'm not like those people, but I would be super valuable, but like that person I can relate to and yeah. therefore I feel I'm like, like I can kind I of belong. jump on here. Yeah. Um, I love the way you explain the, the the overlap and the surface that it created. Yeah, right? like it's a good way to think about it. Increased the surface area right. by having those those three people. Because how diminishing would it be if you could only recruit from a subset of people? Like pe people of all, like the, the the more neural diversity you bring into a meeting, the better decision you will make. Neurodiversity. How like different life stories, um, uh, different. Man, Brains. you really think about this stuff. Neurodiversity. <laughs> That's so cool. It's, think about it this way. If you, um, let's take a, um, like a Wimbledon final tennis match, right? Let's get a recording of a most recent one. And um, like analyze it frame by frame. And just look at, okay, so here's two people. Um, here's, here's the service. Here's where the other person is standing. Here's how they move right before the ball comes. Um, here's how they, where the ball goes. Here's like where they go after we return. Like if, if you really analyze this frame by frame and just say, it's like, I think what you'll find out that at that level they play 80, 90% perfect. Like everything is choreographed. They react perfectly to the, to the state where the ball is, memory. which direct it goes. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you do the same thing with a company, if you could do the same thing with a company, just like have a recording, freeze frame it and analyze every single muscle movement of everyone, like every keystroke, every memo that's being written. Every thought. Every thought, every decision. What would be the efficiency in that? Low. Very low. Very low. Is it 5%? It's an unfair comparison because tennis is 
Well, there's a constraint. The, there's it, a there's a rule set. There's a there's a there's a court. There's, right. Yeah. Every point starts the same. Every yeah. game starts the same. It's like it's 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 it, like you get to perfect the thing. It's it's unfair to business because business is like a new game every minute, right? Yeah. So, I mean, everyone is amateur. Is an, is an amateur in the current minute of a business's existence uh, of what the business looks like in that right moment, but that is really low. <laughs> so that means if if it actually is five percent, let's just say, that means the first company which makes it to seven percent is significantly outperforming everyone else. And so I think here's the cool thing: um, no one knows how to build companies. We we have not figured it out. We we are gonna all at the end of our careers, for hopefully long careers, we're going to look back and say, how the hell did we run companies in 2019? We had no idea how anything works. We have, there's like all these things, which in the meantime, we figured out about motivation and, and, and systems and approaches, um, but we didn't know yet. So how did anything work at all? Uh, we are going to be terribly embarrassed by the companies we were running right now. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, which is why it's such a cool time to build companies. Like, don't you want to be part of a pioneer, pioneering crowd? Why would you try to build a company that's exactly like the other ones? Mm -hmm. the, if, if that's a backdrop, if, if, if you already know that we haven't figured out. What you should do is build one which is different, uh, as different as possible. And for to, to get um, a company that's different, what you have to figure out is you have, your own, you have to figure out your own um, set of things that you think matter to companies. Mm -hmm. So like neurodiversity is one of those kind of things. Like, again, I, I've been in a lot of meetings where everyone's like fairly similar background uh, and we got stuck. And then Somebody else. two new people came into a group with just which, which have lived their lives in a very different way. And they could draw back on a lot of different life experience and said, actually, you know what? This situation is something I have encountered in this sort of abstract way before at some Pattern completely different part, part point of my life. And uh, that's how you solve problems. And so um, you have to figure out what your bets are when, you, when you're building companies. What, what are the things that you believe um, that most people don't, don't agree with? Don't agree with. Yeah. And be right. That doesn't matter. I mean, you, the market will tell you if you're right. You just, what's your set of, um, what is your set of opinions? Like, I, I, I think Shopify had a very off-brand set of opinions about what matters. Um, and the reason why it's as big of a company as it is is because many of them proved to correct. Um, but if you start with the exact same ideas that everyone else does, then you're competing on equal grounds if everyone was already much bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's they've already came to that conclusion. Because they already have done the growth based yeah. on both ideas. Right? How do you, in, from a culture point of view, from a hiring, what, what do you guys do that's unique to make sure that that neurodiversity exists? Yeah, so, um, I mean, we look for very specific things in our hiring. Um, which again are very much in accordance with our. Uh, are you guys uh, using like a profile assessment, some kind of like Myers Briggs or? No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do that in in in, in doing hiring. We're doing it internal in the company. Yeah. Uh, we, we we use just for communication. Yeah, we use people. the Enneagram yeah. mostly and Myers yeah, Briggs, great. and it's um, it's the, the reason why those things are super valuable is just reduce friction. You, yeah, but I think after you take one of those personal tests, basically what it tells you is other people are different, <laughs> and and. Even just knowing, knowing that, that is, is, is actually unlock. super important yeah. um, because that, that's a, one of those massive breakthroughs that everyone has in their careers who, who, who can swing it. Like once there's a before and after and after you understand, hey, most people are not like me. Um, like I have different, like the things that I love doing are chores for other people. Um, and, and the things that are chores for me is like someone's life work, right? Like j just even figuring that one out is, is one of those kind of uh, like amazing things that can really help you in the development of a leader. But doing the hiring, that's not just really what, like you, you wouldn't sit someone down saying, hey, go through with my aspects. Um, we are looking at things that are according to the company values. Like we can teach some of them, uh, like, like potentially at this point we can teach all of them, um, but we can't teach you the world set. You have to start yeah. out. There's a foundational uh, like, character set that needs to be present. It, well, you have to have a bunch of them yeah. and then we'll teach you the ones you're missing. But like if you, if you have to completely turn you from this side to this side, it's just too much work and it'll, it'll not work for the person either. So um, 
I mean, we have a specific way how we do it. We basically talk with people through their life story. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to give too much about this away because part of why it works well is because it's <laughs> it's, it's a surprise for people we're going through because it will feel very very different than Any other uh, hiring. Thing. But yeah. ba but basically, um, we'll find like we'll have a conversation of something that the other person has is is the worldwide like number one authority on, which is their own story, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and um, then we uh, dig into the kinds of things which we find interesting for a certain certain tests and that's the way we do it mm. when you think of um you know toby for me it's you know the product you guys have built the consistency of how it's um performance your api structure the modularity of it the way you structure your teams what what do you what do you feel like you've done right there and maybe, and I think sometimes yeah. you probably take it for granted what you do. So I'm just curious <laughs> if you could unpack it a little bit and then just kind of explain why you do it that yeah, way. Yeah, I was, I was going to say it's very flattering of you to say that. It sounds like uh, it's lo it's looking so good from the outside. I really hope and that's true. You can true. probably see a hundred things you should do better. Because <laughs> I, 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 I see yeah. I see the insight, and it's, yeah. it's a um, yeah. I I mean, the, here's the, the the answer to that is um, you know, yes, you have to have a sort of general alignment about how to solve problems within the team, but then just have really good people. <laughs> uh, there's no other way to do like product at this scale. Like, you know, product is... So it's not about the pod structure. It's not about and anybody can push the production in real time. Like you're just saying it really is at this scale. You, you, have, to, you have to create an incredible environment. Uh, and, and the kinds of... Like what we say is... Um, what what success is important for our success in the long term is that um, if you're an engineer or product person or UX person, if you're in the R&D team um, and you want to solve any problem in the world of commerce, that should be significantly easier to solve within the company as being part of a company as compared to being a startup outside of a company. If that's ever not true, then what are we doing? Wow. And That's so a high bar. Of course, it's a very high bar. It means you have to spend, you, you have to outpace the innovation of, an, of, 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 of the field, right? Um, but things like, yeah, so if you push anything to production, it's, I mean, there's gonna, it, it's gonna ask you, there's an automated system, it's asking you to like assign two people for pull requests uh, review. Mm -hmm. um, after it's been looked at, um, uh, they do their, like little sign off button on, on GitHub. Afterwards, it's automatically merged into a system. There's a bot which tells you um, how 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 deep the queue is right now because you know automated systems tests have to run, yeah. and it automatically goes in production. Yes, uh, once like it goes through the regression tests, hundreds and hundreds of deploys a day. And uh, uh, was that know, always the case, Toby? I think that's been true for three, four, four, five years now. Like it's it's been. Easy to deploy to production has always been part of Shopify. Yeah. Um, it, it used, I mean, at certain points it was that you had to go into a channel and write in a command. Um, so you've, you've added automation, increased the yeah. throughput, but the principle of should yeah. always be easy. It always has to be easy. You have access to incredibly, like, you know, if, you, if you're doing something new, you have uh, an incredible design system over here that you can use. So even like so just the programmers right? can yeah. do like without a designer involved, it already doesn't look Looks terrible. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, then um, uh, you, you know, you need payments, you use this thing. You need a billing system, you need this thing. You need a lock-in system, there's a module. Like you basically can like, you can focus on solving the problem that you want to solve. Uh, everything else is modularized and available to you. Um, and that's just a good environment. It's, 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 it's basically just um, open source approach within a company. Yeah, right? at scale. Do you at guys scale. have a DevOps dedicated team that's building this tool set? Or do you allow teams to decide those are problems that I want to work on? Yeah, so what I don't know is if they would self-identify as DevOps, um, because I don't know if it's current sort of hype cycle uh, state of this particular term. Yeah. Um, I, I, we have a developer acceleration team, which is very, very loved, uh, like, because... Um, but there is a dedicated function to increasing throughput for developers. Oh, I mean, like this, 
the biggest shortage on this planet is developers, right? Like yeah. this this planet, like this planet is building software right now. That's like that will end up being the name of age. Um, and um, we have not, I, I mean, we have not been making enough. So CGs. your goal, it's so interesting. So um, like at some point, a company like it makes way more sense develop like investing into developer efficiency because that, that you get massive leverage on this compared to giving people inefficient tools and then having more people, right? Like, so it's, it makes perfect sense from an investment perspective. Do you do that for most of the other functions in the business? Mm -hmm. How many of those functions or engines do you have? We have a lot of internally built tools, like all our- you have talent acceleration? Yeah. Um, acceleration. Yeah, talent acceleration uses uh, some self-built tools. I mean, if a market produces something that's better, we're okay with that too. in regards to a department, too. focus on acceleration of a function. Yeah. How many of those do you have? So this is mostly present in R&D because that's the tightest roads, right? Again, like engineering specifically, I mean, engineering product people and UX people are rare on this mm -hmm. planet at, at a certain level of quality. Like this is the, the, the labor market for R&D roles is for op, like in a lot, I mean, right now the labor market is pretty good across the um, field, but uh, I mean, low unemployment, but like, it's at full employment and it has been at full employment for the past five, six, seven years in these fields, right? So um, uh, there's no, there's almost never like an engineer looking for a job. <laughs> like there's basically the only mar uh, labor market movements that exist is the top companies shuffling people back and forth. <laughs> so it's, um, you need efficiency uh, out of everyone. And um, I mean, also, uh, if I'm an engineer on a team, I don't want to wait f like an hour for my CI to come back. That's like super boring, right? I want my CI to work across a thousand, like like a yeah. million dollars Paralyze of hardware, and super go. parallels, and yeah, come back to me immediately, the money. right? Because that's go. just like it, that's cooler yeah. <laughs> and more fun, and yeah. therefore it makes sense, right? That's interesting, and. You know, going back to Shopify, enabling more entrepreneurs to build companies. I mean, one of the things that I've, and I don't know, I don't have the data to prove this, but you know, just because things get easier doesn't mean more people build businesses because there's a whole mindset behind it. Yeah. How do you think about that? I, I um, eventually will get to that point and that will be a huge success. I do think like it's unknowable how many people like, I would absolutely self-identify as a kind of person who had to start their own company, and therefore I did. And I think you would do the same, right? There's a certain percentage of people who are the kind of people who really, really, really had to start their own companies for various reasons. More amongst, chief amongst them can't, just, can't work for other people. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so I, I, I'm just sometimes thinking about this. If I would have been, been born in in another time or another country or another place which simply wouldn't have allowed me to do this, I would have been absolutely miserable. Mm -hmm. The reality is, I don't think that's as rare as we make it out to be. I, at least the desire, like I given the chance and given the opportunity, I would start my own company. I would, I would, I would take the risk and I would give it a go to see if it works. I think how, like one in 10 people probably would say yes to that question, if you ask them if it would be like this. Um, I bet you if you ask teenagers, it would be way higher uh, of people, who, the kids who see themselves as being like this. So who knows, it might be 30%, it might be 50% for all we care, or, or for all we know. So, um, uh, so I don't know what the number is, but that's the demand side. So um, demand and then goes to life and looks for opportunities. Like, I, I mean, this was my, like I, at some point went to the hill snowboarding and then did my deep dive. I, I need to learn everything about how snowboards are made because I want to make a choice for one snowboard I'm going to buy because I had no money and I, like, want make the right I want to make the right decision. So I researched everything, um, got the right snowboard, had a wonderful time with it. And at some point was like, yeah, I wonder how many people will want to do as much research as I do. <laughs> and hmm, I, it's too bad there wasn't a website which I could have gone to, which had just good snowboards uh, and would tell me why they have good ones. Um, uh, I'm like, I could make that website. <laughs> and then 
I could make money by actually then selling more snowballs. You know, like it wasn't that hard to understand, like make yeah, me, make these leaps. Yeah. And so, um, so once uh, you know, opportunity meets preparedness. Um, I was at the right point in my life, and I was in, to give it a go, and I saw the opportunity, and then getting those two things together was almost impossible. It turns out I needed like on on this particular journey, which I actually had to. It wasn't a climb; it was a, a vertical wall. Yeah. That the only you reason why I could holes. get up to yeah. my goal was because I had specialized gear, which is called I'm a computer programmer. I yeah. could I could write my own software because no one was giving me that, and um, and some other significant challenges that I had to overcome to make this happen. And so um, the the thing that lies like what, what a lot of sort of free market thinkers um, don't understand is that between the demand and eventual supply lies um, friction. I actually think that friction is probably the most potent force for shaping the planet that people are just generally not acknowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so uh, I think in, in, in uh, like this has been like when, when politicians talk about, hey, we need more, uh, entrepreneurs are amazing, which you know I think every politician in the Western world sort of acknowledges. Um, uh, we need more of it. Usually, the solution is like some kind of incentive package, right? Um, to to that, which can be useful, funding, some accelerators. Yeah. Obviously, it's not bad. It's just the problem is um, they kind of they try to increase the demand side. I, I think I think the demand side is already so big. Yeah. The, 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 friction. the friction in the middle is a problem. Mm. So, and um, that was my theory. I, again, when I turned my snowboard story to Shopify. Um, there was a lot of more people like me, except there was too much friction, and therefore, we, which we needed to solve. And so, Shopify has proven out every single time we make the process simpler of, of, of setting up these malls, there's more consumption. More people make get their first sale. More people do it. At this point, we have a million merchants mm -hmm. um, on, on on Shopify, which is like a mind blowing number. That's it's crazy. Uh, it's, it's the population number of the entire city we are currently in, right? Yeah. And so, they're sellers. And they they were selling actively, and um, like as I earlier said, <laughs> like initial estimates was that there might only be a demand for forty thousand online stores, right? Mm. And um, so so friction is a major component. I think is something that software is, is uniquely good at re at at reducing the friction and and, and so. But I, I I mean I guess the the thought experiment is because like technology and the internet made it easier for a lot of people. Shopify, Shopify has made it a lot easier for people to start businesses. Mm -hmm. But, you know, did more people, like are these people that were already gonna start businesses and they just happen to do it online versus, uh, you know, a retail store or a lawn care company? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, how do we actually create more entrepreneurs that are willing to? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, to a degree unknowable, but just because of the magnitude here of, 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 of a step change, I really like like the the amount of more merchants that have online stores on the internet is vastly outpacing the people on the internet. <laughs> like uh, just like the growth of the internet. Okay, got it. So you actually have the data to prove that like, it's not a percentage of the population, it's actually becoming easier and more people are approaching yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think more people like if if you think like what, what people don't understand, like one thing which is important to acknowledge is the total entrepreneurship is going down in the world. It's actually, the, the, the people don't realize this generally because when you talk about entrepreneurship, people think, okay, well, tech entrepreneurship clearly is working well. Well, yeah, like tech entrepreneurship is doing well, but you have to be a programmer, <laughs> which most people aren't, right? Um, and so, um, the actual n new company formation as a chart over time is trending downwards really? since the 70s. Wow. So, uh, you know, like the, the, the uh, Gen X is less entrepreneurial than the boomers. Uh, the millennials are less entrepreneurial than, than Even Gen X. Even though it's getting easier. Well, for a lot of reasons, like part, part I mean, globalization has to do with it. Like, you're, you know, very quickly competing. Like, like mm. there's a Walmart in every city, so that Make, All the ideas are that produces yeah. the potential for for yeah. a lot of mom and pop stores, right? Yeah. Um, oh, that it, makes sense. So consolidation, yeah. yeah, okay. A lot of consolidation. Um, so uh, the opportunities for new business formation in 
everywhere has actually been reduced. Mm -hmm. um, and um, online is like the internet is just one big village. It, it, it resembles one big village. And there is the war marked, like in the retail space, there's one thing mm -hmm. <laughs> which wants to own all retail. Yeah. And um, uh, like if there, I, I I don't think if there would be a company who's created a viable business model around making it easier for other entrants into this space. Um, by the way, I'm talking about Amazon here. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, don't, yeah. I don't, didn't mean to be so obscure. Like yeah. Amazon wants all yeah, yeah. e-commerce for itself. Yeah. Um, they're kind of an empire. And um, Shopify exists to basically arm the rebels. Like we want lots of people to go and uh, compete with Amazon. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's you really good for the internet. To do that. Exactly. Toby, when you look back at, you know, the entrepreneur, or the person that started Shopify to who you are today, who did you need to become to continue to lead this company? Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating. I, um, um, I, I mean, I have a lot of different like, skills I didn't have back then. Um, I, um, I started out treating business as a complete black box. Um, that's what I told Scott, my co-founder. Uh, and um, focusing on technology. And now, I again, I, I, I recognize so many things that are interesting. And I, I learned so many things about myself. And I think that's been, to me, like just such an amazing coincidence and side effect of, 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 of this particular journey. Like, I just love building things, right? I, 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 and programming was, for me, the best way to build things but now i get to build things in a lot of different ways i get to build teams people systems company um i get to, I get to actually have an, like a real impact on frankly the economies of a lot of countries like um, entrepreneurship is like most people don't work for amazon M most people work for uh, smbs like we, we need millions of small businesses to provide good employment for most people right um which you know we can have a hand in because we can accelerate small business formation. So, like the way I um, think about it is like I could have never jumped any like I, I've met a new version of Shopify every year, mm -hmm. and um, it was I and I, I struggled with it at times, but I, I always tried to be just good enough for the current version of Shopify and and have an eye on what I need to learn for the next one and, and, and just maybe get a little bit of a head start right before needed. And then it, it inevitably caught up to what I could, what, what I could do. Um, and I found out and I didn't, I, I, I wouldn't have known this about myself before and I wouldn't have, um, like certainly my parents wouldn't have predicted this, but that's actually exactly what I wanted. I, I needed to be challenged in this particular way. And, um, uh, it's, it's been, just really, really, really interesting. Um, you know, at this point, it just when I when I start feeling comfortable with like I got a handle on what Shopify needs for me right now, I get really suspicious. That's the moments I get really worried because I'm like, I wonder if that is because I don't I don't quite know what Shopify really needs for me right now. Mm. I need to go back and look broader and talk with people and read some far field books to try to get some ideas for figuring out where my next growth comes from. Because again, I have to get I, ideally twice as good by ne uh, next year to, 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 to stay in my job. and To requalify. To requalify. That's amazing. Uh, Toby, I just want to wrap up by saying as a Canadian entrepreneur, as a technologist, um, what you've built in Ottawa, in Canada, uh, is crazy inspiring. I know there's a lot of people that may never have the opportunity to meet you in person to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you on their behalf because it's, I don't know, we always need those people that have gone before to be that example. And it's just really um, cool to see you not only have built it, but, but share the way you think about building it. Because I think a lot of people have aspirations, but they don't even know what would I do tomorrow to get there. And I think in our conversation today, you definitely shed some light. I know for me, and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot, man. This appreciate it. Fun. And we're, it's a wrap. Thanks for watching this episode of Escape Velocity. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment with your biggest insight from our conversation. Be sure to check out the next episode.